Howdy folks, welcome back to my YouTube. It's been a while since I've recorded an Armored Warfare replay. Really haven't been playing too much Armored Warfare recently, but here we are, new Armored Warfare video. And today for you, I am doing PvE Hardcore. This is Operation Basilisk, and I am in the Tier 3 Soviet BMP-1. And I'm in a Tier 4 matchup, so I am not the upper tier here. Let alone, I am in a class of vehicle I am not very good at. But we'll see how this unravels while I give some history and development here on the BMP-1. Which was a first of... It was the first in a series of lightweight infantry fighting vehicles. Now understand, there's differences between infantry fighting vehicles and armor personnel carriers. Think of an armored personnel carrier as more or less an armored taxi. It's just meant to taxi infantrymen to the battlefield, drop them off, get out of the battlefield, and then if any, if, when the infantry needs to remount, they remount onto the vehicle. For the most part, all it is is it's just essentially an armor casing to protect the crew from uh, small arms fire, such as rifles, protects the crew from shell splinters, things of that nature, where infantry fighting vehicles are quite a bit different. They don't seem to carry as they don't tend to carry as much infantrymen. They tend to have a little bit better in the performance in the way of firepower. In the case of the BMP-1, you have a 73 millimeter gun. With stuff like the Bradley, you have uh, the 25 millimeter auto cannon, which I, I know in game it says 40 millimeter, but trust me, folks, it's it's a 25 millimeter Bushmaster, um, as well as. The BMP-2 has a 23mm autocannon, and then the Martyr II could either have a 35mm autocannon or a 50mm autocannon based on what barrel they had in the gun itself. They also tend to have ATGMs, something else that APCs tend not to have. More or less, they tend to have nothing more than a machine gun for defense purposes in case the vehicle gets ambushed anti-air needs, things of that nature. It tends to be either like a 762 millimeter machine gun, like an M240 or a 50 cal. In the case of like the M113, you can have a 50 cal on it with a, it's an M2 machine gun, which has been around in the US military forever because it's, it's a solid machine gun. So, and then what happens is the IFV hangs around on the battlefield It'll roll in with tanks and other vehicles of that nature, and it will give infantry support, anti-tank firepower, anti-tank, uh, anti-light vehicle firepower. In the case of being able to destroy uh, other different types of vehicles, not just tanks. It was mass-produced for the Soviet Union in the late 1950s. The Soviets was using World War II mechanized infantry tactics. Basically, APCs, roll your infantrymen up to the battlefield, drop them off, and they go off to do their thing. However, in contrast, Germany, on the other hand, was coming up with a new style of tactics, which would be the, the combat doctrine would be based around a vehicle that was in development at the time, which was the HS-30 vehicle you see right here on the screen right now. And basically, the basis was around the whole idea of the infantry fighting vehicle, even though the time, the vehicle, and the tactics itself was still in development. So, the Soviet Union would decide that an IFV-type vehicle would be useful to the Red Army. The requirements for the new vehicle would be drawn up, but it was undecided if the new vehicle should be wheeled or tracked. Even a hybrid wheel track system would be explored. Probably something very similar to like a half track like you'd see in World War II, where the front half is wheels, the rear half is tracks. Um, they tend to uh, have better train crossing capability than an all, uh, than a all wheeled vehicle, but they also don't really have the good speed or train crossing capability of a tracked vehicle. Sorry, the good speed of a wheeled vehicle nor the train crossing capability of an all-tracked vehicle, such as a tank. The Object 764 would be chosen due to the front-mounted engine 
and the large rear doors. It allowed infantry to mount and dismount quickly and easily for a vehicle of its size. Another improvement, another improved prototype would be built in 1965 as the Object 765. The prototype would be approved for service in 1966 as the BMP-1. The early BMP-1 would enter service with the 120th Rifle Guard Division. They would put the new vehicle through more testing while the vehicle would remain in limited production. In 1973, the BMP was combat tested for the first time. The vehicle was used by both Egypt, Egyptian and Syrian militaries during the Yom Kippur War. It was also used in the Soviet-Afghan War as well. And with the lessons learned in both wars, it was decided to make various improvements to the BMP-1. The new BMP-2 would feature improvements to the fighting qualities over the BMP-1, and the BMP-2 would enter service in August 1980. In 1987, the BMP-3 would enter service, and it was a radical redesign of the whole vehicle over the previous BMPs. It seems that the, as of 2018, the Russian Federation is actually updating their old BMP ones to a new, more modernized standard. This version is the BMP one AM. The BMP one was armed with an auto loading 73 millimeter 2A28 low pressure gun and a 7.62 coaxial PKT machine gun. And an AT3 Sager ATGM. That being noted, the early BMP-1s did not have the Sager. At the time, it was planned that it would have the Sager, but the Sager was still in development. They were still having a lot of issues with the deployment of the fin system itself, which they would come up with a solution for shortly after the vehicle would actually enter in service and then all the vehicles would quickly be updated to have the Sager missile system. The BMP-2 would replace most of those weapon systems with a 2A-42 30mm autocannon and an AT-4 Spygot. Now that being said, between the two guns, honestly, the 30mm autocannon actually is an improvement, even though it doesn't sound like it. By the, the 73mm gun could really only fire heat and high explosive. And by the time, by the 1980s, that gun would just not be able to penetrate most vehicles that it would actually encounter outside of things like the M113 and Humvees. The BMP-1 is constructed of an all-welded, rolled steel design. It is said that the front will protect the crew from up to 23 millimeter autocannon fire and the rest of the vehicle protects the crew and passengers from 50 cal and artillery fire, or so that's been said. The engine is mounted in the front on the right side of the vehicle, and it is amphibious. It propels itself by its tracks and can reach a maximum of around five miles per hour in water. Pretty laughable, but the fact that you can just drive through a river when you come across one is really paramount especially at this time and especially in Taking russia position. actually the bmp-1 is still in service with many countries around the world and it looks like the bmp-1 as well as the bmp-2 will still be in service for many more years to come now let's talk a little bit about the vehicle in armored warfare it is a tier 3 ifv and it can carry an infantry crewman which for me, I go with the mortar because reasons. It's nice just to drop a crew, you know, infantryman off behind a building and let him have his way with the mortar system. The mortar system is great for getting resets on heavier vehicles, including vehicles that I can't even penetrate with my weapon systems. Now that being said, I also do have the ATGM upgrade on this and I'm gonna be honest, it'd be easier just to have a monkey throwing shit it'd be just so much more effective it is it is really slow reloading weapon system it's slow to switch to 
Um, the weapon system itself, the missile's not very fast moving, so it's very hard to hit moving targets with it, as well as it's not very reactive. So even when you, you know, give it that steering command or you try to adjust your aim, it's not very fast at adjusting. So all in all, that being said, the ATGM is actually pretty damn useless. And the only time it's really worth using is when you run into a vehicle that you cannot penetrate with the 73 millimeter gun. That being said, there's not too many vehicles out there that the 73 millimeter gun actually can't handle. Uh, I run mine with all heat. No point of running high explosive because the high explosive just does not have enough penetrate uh, enough penetration to really penetrate anything that it's going to run up against. And, you know, all honesty, the, with the way heat works and the way high explosive works, it's honestly just better to run with the heat. Because even if you, per se, need that reset, need a capture point reset, the high explosive anti-tank ammunition will work. Now, there's one more little snippet I want to dive into here also with the actual BMP-1 while the match is finishing up. And that was actually, there was problems with the autoloader system, which was found to be very unsatisfactory. It was easy because of vibrations and things of that nature. It was really easy for the autoloader system to kind of get thrown out of whack, out of calibration, and actually not work properly. And it would actually jam up the gun. The next problem also I found, found when looking at records of the BMP-1 is the commander has to completely expose himself to reload the ATGM, the, the Sager missile system, uh, which would be later corrected with how they did the ATGM system on the BMP-2. The last thing I really want to put into here is the vehicle is, actually says it has a troop capability of eight. It actually will see eight troops but it's actually very cramped crew conditions. So I found notations that a lot of countries actually only will load six passengers in their BMP-1s and their BMP-2s due to the cramped conditions of the vehicle. They made the vehicle really low. Uh, there's actually, there's not a lot of height to it. That being said, the, there actually is panels on the roof of the vehicle that can be opened up and the crew could stand up. But essentially, if you're really jammed in there, well, you're really jammed in there. Also, from what I can tell looking at notes, there actually is NBC protection for the crewmen, but not for the passengers. That's not really a big deal considering the passengers will more than likely have gas masks. So anyway, folks, there's the end of the match. Let's go over the results. Unfortunately, it was a defeat, even though I really tried to give it what I could for being actually in a really bad Tier 3 IFV. Um, I, I would do 11,872 damage, so almost 12,000 damage, spotted 11 enemy vehicles, and destroyed 11 enemy vehicles. So I was really racking it up there, even with that weak... 73 millimeter gun and that being said i would be number one for damage overall and i would actually be number three for spotting main battle tanks on operation basilisk tends to do better when it comes to spotting actually normally if i'm running an mbt i can pretty regularly get a blue star on that map just from spotting damage but anyway folks that is my Armored Warfare replay on the BMP-1 and gave you some little snippets there about the BMP-2. Anyway, folks, hopefully you enjoyed the video. Thank you very much for tuning in and have yourself a wonderful day.